German lagers typically aren't super high in the ABV alcohol department, but that's not the case with German export beer, where the alcohol levels bumped up a little bit. We're going to brew one of those and talk about grain storage. If I take it down, would you really hold me down and be your best friend? I'm Martin Keane and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew all 99 beer styles as defined by the BJCP guidelines. Now I'm working my way through a number of German lagers. So far I have brewed Munich Helles, Helles Bock, and now I'm on German Helles export beer. Helles, turns out that means bright. Now this beer is also known as Dortmunder Export, and the thing that separates it from most other German lagers are, well, the hoppiness is just, just raised a little bit. So we're gonna use noble hops here, and they're going to be a little bit higher than some of the other lagers I've done. And the other thing that's gonna be higher is the alcohol content. I'm brewing this one at 6% ABV. The ingredients for this do not stray too far from a lot of the other German lagers I've brewed. So the base malt is, surprise, surprise, German Pilsner malt. I'm using eight pounds of that. Then for specialty malts, I have two pounds of Vienna malt and one pound of light Munich malt or Munich 10. I'm looking to get a gravity of 1054 from this beer. She just wanna hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like, yes ma'am. So this is where I store all my grain. Now, when I first started out home brewing, every time I was gonna brew a beer, I'd put together the recipe, go to the homebrew store, and buy exactly the amount of grain that I needed for that brew. Now that I'm brewing every week, that is both very inconvenient and also quite costly. So buying grain in bulk and then storing it at home means it's a bit cheaper to, to buy per, per unit, uh, but also, and very importantly for me, it's a huge time saver because I have the ingredients in hand um, without having to go to the home brew store for each individual brew. So I keep three base malts on hand at all times. I have American Two Row and German Pilsner and Maris Otter. And these are stored in Vittel's vaults, which are actually intended for pet food. But they fit perfectly a 50 or 55 pound sack of grain. And this is where I keep my specialty grains. Now I have a couple of buckets here for large amounts of grain, but most of them I store in these little three quart containers here. I got these from the dollar store and uh, they can store about four pounds of grain each. So every time I go to the homebrew store and I need a grain, I've run out of something, I'll buy four pounds of it, and store it in here. Time-saving convenience is massively important to me. And when you get the chance to put together what's basically a homebrew shop in your own house, you know, it's kind of neat. Well, um, had a bit of a brewing disaster now. As you can see, I'm kind of got wort everywhere. This is 200 Fahrenheit wort, by the way. So this is not good. Um, here's what happened. Uh, I raised the, the grain bed here out of the pot, which is what I normally do. I was just using a spoon here just to try to get the uh, the, make sure all of the liquid was out by just sort of moving the grains and what I ended up doing was sort of shifting this pot and uh, it ended up dropping straight back into the boil kettle and then the wort just pff, exploded out uh, of it so there's um, yeah two two kind of issues here the the first issue is there's a lot of wort on the floor and on the walls and so forth so I'm going to be 
delivering a little bit less beer than I had initially expected. Okay. Uh, the second issue then is that the grain from the beer um, ended up in contact with the wort at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for a minute or so and I'm not kind of sure what impact that's going to have on the beer either. Now the other thing that's happened is as the wort spilled over it ended up landing right on the outlet for the 240 volt heating element power input um, and that ended up shorting this out so this guy here the light was off just now and I had to go to my breaker here and uh, flick it back on so probably not the best idea to get that thing wet. Apart from covering myself and my brewery in sticky wort and potentially ruining the beer and running the risk of electrocution, I think everything's going okay. So we're going to go on to add the hops. Hops for this are typical German noble hops and a fair amount of them. So two ounces of Hallertau Mittelfrö going in at 60 minutes as the bittering hop. It smells so good. Okay, and then uh, for 10 minutes, more Hallertau Mittelfrö, that's one ounce. And then right at flame out, I'm gonna add that spicy floral tetanang, one ounce of that. Well, the finished beer came in at the expected gravity of 10.55, so that's something. I ended up with about four and a half gallons in the fermenter, so that's not too bad. Uh, rest of it on my walls and floor, which I've uh, done my best to clean up. Now I have the, uh, the fermenter in the fridge, it's chilling. I'm gonna get it to around 55 Fahrenheit. And then I'm gonna add WLP830 German Lager Yeast. So that's the end of brew day for now. And now I'm gonna change my clothes. So I've got Roy here with me to taste the beer. Welcome Roy. Welcome, thank you for having me. Absolutely, so the beer came out at a 10.06 final gravity. I uh, was fermenting at 50 Fahrenheit, moved up to 55. Uh, did a dilatatile rest at 68 and then crashed. Uh, so we're at a 6.4% beer. So, um, now Roy, I should mention sort of your... Um, Technique. Yeah, because um, generally you don't drink, right? No, no. Right, except except you have had a few of the beers. I remember you being quite fond of the uh, the raspberry wheat beer we did. Yes, yes, I couldn't get that done quick enough. <laughs> That's, that was very nice. Yeah, so, so it would be interesting to see what you think of this yes. one. Yes. So uh, first of all, let's just take a look at the appearance of this one. I like the white head. Yeah, I think the combination has come out pretty good. That sounds nice. Yeah, um, I'm not really getting much of a, a sort of a hoppy floral smell at all from it. A little bit malty perhaps. Mm. Gotta try it. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. I'm just checking you're not downing the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I, I like that. I'll definitely be asking them for another one of them tonight. <laughs> yeah, yes. I think it's it's quite uh, malt forward. It's not very hoppy, right? There's yeah. not much. Uh, hot flavour to it. But it's still got, still got its head and the colour. Cut, I like the colour. Yeah. I think that goes with that, that other one I, I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it passes the Roy test, the non-drink yeah. test, then I, I'm pretty happy with that, with that result. If I went to a pub and got that, I'd be very, very happy. Yeah. You know, I really would. I'm pleased to hear it. So, let's, uh, let's do a cheers. 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 Yep. <laughs> Dispatched. That is, that is really nice. <laughs> was a bit fluffy. Right? <laughs> was really nice. Yes. yes Next. Was, my, <laughs> I have my own technique for this. 